Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the step-by-step -step process that I took to become an indie game engine developer. So let's begin. If we haven't met, my name is Jero Serrano and I develop a 3D game engine. And I'm here to help you build yours. Before I share with you the steps that I took to develop a game engine, I need to be um, completely honest and uh, set some expectations. Um, a game engine is a very, very complex project. So do not expect to have a game engine up and running within one year. Uh, it's gonna take you longer than that. It's gonna take you at least two and a half years. Um, I want you to know that so that way uh, you don't uh, start developing a game engine thinking that you're gonna have one uh, working within uh, six months. It's not gonna happen. Uh, and I, I really want you to know this and I'm being totally honest with you. It's gonna take you longer than that. It's a very complex project. Uh, with that being said, let's do this. So before you start developing a game engine, uh, you know, you may want to know, okay, what are the main components of a game engine? Um, and there are basically four main components, um, four basic components. Um, they are the mathematics engine, the rendering engine, the physics engine, and the collision detection system. And the interaction among all of these components uh, is what makes a game possible uh, is what allows a character to run across the screen and jump and shoot and do all of the graphical effects that you see in a game so your task as an indie game engine developer is to uh, develop these four basic components and i'm going to share with you uh, step by step how to develop these four components i'm going to start out with that the math engine and then go to the rendering and the physics and then collision detection system and as I'm explaining to you what you need to know and what you need to do, I'm also going to be sharing the resources uh, that may help you uh, get there, all right? So your first step is to develop a mathematics engine. And what is a math engine? Well, a math engine is a system of multiple classes uh, that implement uh, linear algebra operations. Uh, and these operations allows a game character uh, to translate and rotate in the game. And what do you need to develop a math engine? Well, basically you're gonna need to learn or review a uh, linear algebra, um, learn what is a vector, what is a matrix, what is a dot product, a cross product, and a space uh, transformations. Um, and a good book uh, that I recommend you to use and the one that I use uh, is called uh, 3D uh, Math Primer for Graphics and Game Development. And aside from learning uh, linear algebra, you also are going to need to learn a computer language. And I recommend you to learn C++. At this point, you don't need to become an expert, but you do need to learn the basics. So I recommend you to uh, focus on learning how to create a class, uh, what is uh, encapsulation, what is polymorphism, what is inheritance. And a good book that I recommend and the one that I also used um, uh, is called uh, Thinking in C++. Once you have enough knowledge uh, on linear algebra and the basics of C++, then you are ready to develop your math engine. Uh, so uh, focus on implementing a, a vector class, a matrix class, uh, implement uh, functions that will compute that product, a uh, cross product, uh, and a space uh, transformations. Uh, you are going to use those a lot. There is a project that I wrote a while back which you may find useful when you are developing your math engine. Uh, it is basically a, a small project that uh, goes step by step on how to develop a math engine using C++. I'm going to uh, provide a link uh, in the description below. Um, you may find it useful, you know, in case you get stuck and you need some kind of guidance, all right? And the second step that you need to do is uh, develop your rendering engine. Um, and what is a rendering engine? Well, in simple terms, a rendering engine is responsible for initializing the proper buffers in the GPU, uh, for initializing the shaders, and for the communication between the CPU and the GPU. And the interaction between uh, this component and your GPU is what enables your characters to be rendered on your screen. And to develop a rendering engine, you first need to learn computer graphics. 
Uh, this is the fun part because you will actually get to play around with uh, graphical effects. But to do that, uh, you must first uh, learn what a GPU shader is, uh, what is the whole purpose of the graphics pipeline, how uh, shaders manipulate the data. And there's this book that I recommend you to read, which is called um, Graphic Shaders uh, Theory and Practice. Uh, it will go over the theory uh, uh, behind uh, GPU shaders. It will also help you uh, understand the different stages that data goes th uh, through in the graphics pipeline. And um, aside from that, there is this uh, website that I recommend you to um, take a look at. This website will uh, allow you to play around with the vertex and fragment shaders. Uh, it will give you the opportunity to play around with the graphics uh, layer shading language, which is the language that you use to uh, program uh, shaders. And once you feel comfortable with computer graphics concepts, uh, then it's the time to learn OpenGL. If you have no idea what OpenGL is, well, it is basically a library, an API, uh, whose sole purpose is to take data from the CPU to the GPU. Uh, and this is the time w w when the fun begins. Uh, so I recommend you to do as many projects as possible. Learn how to render characters. Uh, learn how to apply a texture to a character. Uh, learn how to render a skybox. Learn how to uh, render images, etc. Again, um, do a lot of projects. And a good resource that I recommend you to use is the OpenGL Super Bible Book. Uh, get edition seven that in my opinion is the best edition there is now once you understand gpu shaders and you know uh, a bit about opengl the next step is to learn design patterns why well because a game engine is a very complex architecture and you want this architecture to be very modular adaptable maintainable and flexible and design patterns will help you with with that now there are two books that i recommend you to get uh, the first one is called Design Pattern, uh, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. And the other one is called uh, Header First Design Patterns. Now, there's one thing that you need to know between these two books. The first one, Design Patterns, Reusable uh, Object-Oriented Software, uh, is not suitable for beginners, in my experience. Uh, it is a really good book, but not for beginners. Um, the second book, however, uh, Head First Design Pattern, is more suitable for beginners, but the only problem is that their examples are in Java. However, I think if you take the time to, uh, to read it and really understand uh, the idea behind the pattern, you will have no problem um, writing it in C++. So now that you know linear algebra and you know about uh, computer graphics, theory uh, you know about OpenGL and now about and now that you know uh, design patterns guess what now you should be able to combine all of this knowledge and develop your rendering engine now the next step is to develop a physics engine um, and the main responsibility of a physics engine is to uh, compute the resulting acceleration velocity and displacement of a character from forces acting upon it. And you do this by integrating the equation of motion. Now, there are two books that I recommend you to get. The first one is called Physics for Game Developers. This book will go into the nitty gritty uh, equations that you are going to need to develop your physics engine. And it is very helpful, especially if you forgot most of the physics that you learned in college. Uh, the second book is called uh, Game Physics Engine Development. Uh, this book doesn't really go into the equations, but it gives you a good overview on how to implement the architecture for your physics engine. So um, both of these books combined, you know, will really help you develop your own physics engine. And finally, you need to develop a collision detection system. Now, the responsibilities of this uh, component are the following. Number one, it needs to detect if a collision happened. Number two, it needs to compute uh, where the collision occurred. And number three, uh, it needs to calculate the proper collision response. Now, all of these operations are very expensive. Therefore, you are going to need to use a lot of algorithms uh, to speed up the process. Believe me when I tell you this, 
This is the component that is going to take you the longest time to complete and the one that is going to give you the most headaches. Luckily, there's this book that will help you uh, develop this system. It is called Real-Time Collision Detection System by Kristen Erickson. Uh, this is one of those books that it would be impossible to develop uh, a collision system without. Please do buy it, get it, because you are going to need it. So these are the steps that you need to take to develop a game engine and uh, become an indie game engine developer. I really hope this helps. Uh, and if you need more uh, tutorials or more videos, I actually have uh, two other videos that I'm gonna be uh, showing them somewhere around here, uh, which will actually give you some tips on how to develop your game engine and some tools that you should be uh, aware about. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Uh, I'm uploading videos, especially on game engine development, uh, especially to help you develop your game engine. Okay, guys, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time.